the section one two basics of functions and their graphs forbes magazine published a list of the highest paid tv celebrities between june 2010 and june 2011 the results are shown in figure 1.13 so we have some celebrities uh, and then uh, their earnings the graph indicates a correspondence between a tv celebrity and that person's earnings in millions of dollars we can write this correspondence using a set of ordered pairs winfrey 315 cowell 80 and so on Find the domain and range of a relation. So the domain is the set of input values, or set of x's in this case. They're actually words, names that is. So Winfrey, Cowell, uh, McGraw, uh, DeGeneres. <laughs> I had to think of how to say that. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres. And then Seacrest. So then we usually use the curly brackets to denote domain and range. And then the range is the output values, or the Ys. 315, 80, 80. Oh, we don't have to list that twice because we're just listing the values, not how many times they occur. We, when listing the domain and range, that's not really an issue. Definition of a function. A function is a correspondence from a first set called the domain to a second set called the range, such that each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. So we're going to map each and decide if each relation is a function. So a set of ordered pairs is a relation. Now we have to decide if it's of a, a specific relation called a function. So And we do that by mapping. So we have domain, and we have 3685, 3685. We're going to map this to its corresponding range values, which is 2, negative 1, 3, and 7. So 3 goes to 2, 6 to negative 1, 8 to 3, and 5 to 7. Now, 3 has one output, 6 has one. Each of these has one output. So this is a function. Yep, this is a function. And then how about the next one? Domain 3685, 3685. And we have the range which is 2, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, and 3, but we only write 3 once. So 3 goes to 2, 6 goes to negative 1, 8 goes to 3, and 5 goes to 3. Now, that's okay. That's good. That's okay to be a function. That's a function because 8 only has one output, 5 only has one output. They're going to the same value, but that that's okay. That's fine. Now, this last one is not going to be a function. It's only a relation. 3688, 368, and we don't write 8 again. 2, negative 1, 3, 7. 2, negative 1, 3, 7 is the output. So 3 goes to 2, 6 goes to negative 1, 8 goes to 3, 8 goes to 7. This is a relation. It is not a function because 8 has two different output values. So here's example 2. Determine whether each relation is a function. So 1, 2, 3, 4, there's no repeats. So domain, uh, I mean, if, if your x values repeat, then it's not going to be a function. So this is a function. None of the x values are repeating. In other words, one x value has one and only one output value. Now this, 6 goes to 1 and 6 goes to 2. This is a relation. Determine whether an equation represents a function. If we minus subtract the x squared over, let's say we pick a value. Let's say we pick, uh, find a y of 1. In other words, we're going to plug 1 in. We get 4 minus 1 squared. That's 4 minus 1. That's 3. So 1 input, 1, gets 1 output. So all we have is 1, 3. Now this one, this is a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 2. So it's a circle, all right, centered at 0, 0. That is not that's not a function. Determine each function device. So that'd be yes on A. This is going to be no, but because we know this is a circle, but I think algebraically we should probably do it like this. We subtract over the x squared and then square root both sides. Now, when you square root both sides, you get a plus and a minus. So if we pick 1x, I don't know what would be nice. There's not a whole lot of nice values on this one. Uh, plus or minus square root of, let's Let's pick 1. So we plug 1 value in, 1, and we get plus square root of 3 and minus square root of 3. So 1 gives us positive square root of 3, and 1 gives us negative square root of 3. 
So one has two outputs. And you end up with two outputs because y is two in uh, uh, even power. y is two in even power. When you take the radical, you get plus or minus. That is not a function. So no, this one is not a function. Function notation. This is f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. f of 4 just means plug 4 in. So 4 times 16 minus uh, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1. 64 minus 8 plus 9. Or no, we should minus 8 first. How about, um, what, 56 plus 1, 57. So f of 4 is equal to 57, or in other words, we got the point 4, 57, but we're using what's called function notation. Now we can do this on a graphing calculator. So let's say we go to y equals, let me clear this out from previous sections. 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. Oh, I don't want that squared. 2x not squared, delete that out, insert an x, there we go. Let's go zoom 6, a standard window, it's going to be a parabola, and we want a f of 4, so we can do this, we can go second calculate a value and plug in 4, and there's that 57. And you can also do this, go to variables, Go over to y variables, function, and we put that function into y1, and we're plugging in 4, and it gives us 57. So a couple ways to use your calculators to get values. Evaluate a function. If f of x is x squared plus 3x plus 5, evaluate each of the following. So a, f of 2 is equal to 2 squared is 4, plus 6, plus 5, and that's 15. B, f of x plus 3 is x plus 3 squared plus 3 times x plus 3 plus 5. That's x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 3xx plus 9 plus 5. So it looks like x squared plus 9x plus 18 and another 5 is uh, 23. And then letter C Wherever we see an x, we're going to plug in a negative x. That's negative x squared plus 3 times negative x plus 5. So that's x squared, because when you square the negative, it comes positive, minus 3x plus 5. Graphing functions. Graph the, fo graph the following functions in the same window. How does the constant affect the parent graph? So let's clear this. The parent graph is x squared. And then we have x no, I want, I, want, I want x first, not squared first. x squared plus 2. And let's just go zoom 6. So here's the parent graph. And plus 2 moves, uh, moves the parent up 2. So how does the constant affect? Well, up 2. That's how it affects the parent. So now we're going to take x squared. We're going to take the y values for x squared. We're going to minus 2 from them. That's going to move the parent graph down. So this is down 2. Down, this is down. D-O-W-N. Down 2. And then the last one. X squared plus 5. Now that parent graph is the exact same shape, but it gets moved. This parent graph gets moved up 5. So up 5. Now it doesn't move this up 5. It moves the parent graph up five. The vertical line test for functions. If any vertical line intersects a graph in more than one point, the graph does not define y as a function of x. So use the vertical line test to identify graphs in which y is a function of x. This is not a function. So no, that is not a function. This vertical line passes two points. So for every x value, for every x value here, we get out two different y values. So like if we plugged in, let's say an x value of two, we're getting out, let's say, 5, and we're getting out negative 5 also. So the x values are repeating, which means it's going to fail the vertical line test. Now, as long as you don't have a vertical line, all lines are functions. So, yep, that's a function. Uh, we cannot create a vertical line that passes two points on this one. So this is yes. This is not a function. Uh, it, pa it fails the vertical line test. So this is not a function. Anything down there? Nope. 
The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, infects and kills helper T cells. Because T cells stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies, their destruction disables the body's defense against other pathogens. By counting the number of T cells that remain active in the body, the progression of H, uh, HIV can be monitored. The fewer helper T cells, the more advanced the disease. Figure 1.21 shows a graph that is used to monitor the average progression of the disease. The average number of T cells F of X is a function of time after infection. So this is time after infection in years and average T cell count per milliliter of blood. Explain why F represents the graph of a function. Well, this passes the vertical line test. Use the graph to find f of 8. f of 8 is 200. For what values of x is f of x equal to 350? So if we go to 350, it's about right there. I don't know. This would be this would be 500, right? This would be uh, 450. Oh, what did I want? I wanted 350. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, this would be 300. This would be 350 right here. Let's get to the right spot. I'm going to go with seven. Seven years. Describe the general trend shown by the graph. Uh, decreasing. Decreasing T cell count. Because as we go from left to right, this graph is decreasing. Finding domain and range from a graph illustrates how the graph of a function is used to determine the function's domain and range. So domain is what x values did we use to make this graph? And the range is what y values do we use to make this graph? So give the domain and range in set builder and in, uh, interval notation. So here's the graph that we're going to use as an example. And the domain in interval notation, uh, brackets means we're going to include these points, is from negative 4 to 2. Bracket, not curly bracket, bracket. Now, set builder notation says x such that, and we use curly brackets, x such that, uh, we're going from negative 4 to 2, curly bracket. So this is set builder. This is interval notation. The range is we go from 1 to, looks like 4, 1 to 4, 1 to 4. In set builder, set builder notation, x such that uh, we're going from 1 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 4, like that. Now let's say this was an open dot. Instead of a closed dot, it was an open dot, so we're not including 2. In that scenario, the domain would be negative 4 to 2 parentheses, because we would, would not want to include 2. Then the set builder would be x such that negative 4 less than or equal to x less than Two, we just wouldn't put the equal part on that one. Use a graph of, of each function to identify its domain and range. So domain, we'll just use uh, interval notation. Negative 2 to 1 is used to graph this. The range looks like 0 to 3 is used. Uh, on this one, the domain is parentheses, negative 3 to 2 bracket. And the range would be from negative 1 to 2, so parentheses, bracket. Over here, the domain would be, uh, how about negative 2 to 1? So negative 2 to 1, oh, 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 bracket, negative 2 to 1, parentheses. And the range would be, now we're including 1 here, including 1. So uh, range is 1 to 5, bracket, both brackets. Now this has an arrow going to the left, so the domain would be from negative infinity. We never use a bracket on infinities or negative infinities. And then we're going all the way to four, including four. The range is from zero up to infinity. So zero up to infinity, never use brackets on infinity. On letter E, the domain is from, we're going from one, and we do use two, and we do use three, but not four. Uh, so one to four. And the range, we're not going to be able to use interval notation because this suggests that we use all values from 1 to 4. But for the y's, we're just literally using numbers 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to have to use set for that. y such that y is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And lastly, over here, we're going to identify the x and y intercepts. So identify intercepts from a function's graph. So we have x intercepts at negative 2, 3, and 5. Uh, so x intercepts, uh, negative 2, 0, 3, 0, 5, 0. And y intercept is uh, 0, 3.